Hi YouTube, it's Bethany from Madame and Jean Antiques and Restoration. It has been a while since I've done a tutorial. Life has just gotten busy and away from me. I had one kid graduate from high school and another one graduate from elementary school. She's not gonna be going into middle school. So crazy, busy summertime and I'm just getting kind of back into the groove. I finally got the plague, the dreaded COVID. It hit my house, everybody got it. And I'm still got a little residual, um, I'm gonna call it a little, little bit of a raspiness to my voice, a little bit in my chest. And I'm still waiting for my taste and smell to come back. So <laughs> I'm really missing my morning coffee. That is my thing, that is my vice. And if anything, I'm tired of drinking hot water that doesn't taste like anything. So I'm hoping that's gonna come back soon. But what I really am excited for, and that's the whole point of this new tutorial that I'm about to do, is I got introduced to a new paint line and I'm super, super excited to introduce it to you. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I teach everything under the sun when it comes to upcycling and redoing old and vintage and antique furniture, whatever label you wanna put on it. That is my thing and I'm passionate about it. And what I'm also passionate about is teaching new beginners in this line of work because I once was you. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years and I found YouTube to be a very resourceful source of information for me when I was starting out. But I also had to learn a lot of things on my own the hard way, making mistakes, mistakes cost me money. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to empower other people out there that are just starting their journey with refinishing, jazzing up furniture, and I want to empower you to not be scared, um, to dive in, get creative. I find it very therapeutic myself, so I feel like the world is crazy right now and we all need a little bit of an anchor of something that gives us joy. So if it's for you, like me, creating something with your hands or taking something that doesn't look so pretty and jazzing it up and making it beautiful once again, um, this is your channel. So welcome. Um, my name is Matt. My name is not Madeline. Uh, my company is Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. It's named after my daughter. I'm Bethany. Yeah, it's a little bit of a COVID brain frog, fog still lingering there. Um, and the paint that I'm going to introduce to you is a clay-based paint and it is called Debbie's Design Diary DIY Paint. The cutest labels, I love her labels, I love her logo, logo. she's got a truck. I have an old truck for my, um, for my business. Um, this is what her paint looks like. Before we get started with painting with this clay-based paint, I want to send you guys over to my Facebook business page, and that's here. That's at Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. Over there, you're gonna find all my before and after photos. You're gonna find links to my tutorials. You're gonna find my shop where you can buy pieces or other things that I create. I am also on Instagram, and I just changed my last name back to my mom's maiden name. So this is like a new name for me as well. So, and that's at bethany.joy.luke. My last name is now Luke. So that's here. And on Instagram, gosh, you're gonna find everything. You're gonna find some of my funny TikToks. You're gonna find um, a lot of projects that I'm working on, a lot of before and after shots. So go check me out on social media over there and let's get over to my workshop and let's get going on using this paint. I am so excited to show you guys. Let's go. Okay, everyone, we're on the other side of my workshop where the magic happens that I like to call it over here. Look at this piece. I know it's super dark, probably coming across the video, but I got this mammoth of a piece for free, for free. Ah! I don't understand people, but you know what? I'm so glad I don't understand people because I get the benefits of people going, hey, you want this? Eh, we don't really like it. And I'm like, oh, yes I do. So I'm gonna do a close up video. You're gonna see there's beautiful detail here, right here, there's like this flower, carved flower area here. It's got this really cool design on either side of it. This piece would make a phenomenal like TV stand or an entryway piece if you've got a really big entryway in your house. 
So my vision for this piece with this new clay based paint, this DIY paint, I'm going to use two light colors that they have. They have this beautiful color called mint chip. I'm going to throw it up here. They've got another gorgeous color called apothecary. And I am pronouncing that right apothecary. And it's kind of like a, um, sea foam green darker teal oh my gosh it's, mm, it's the chef's kiss let me tell you this color right here is like my favorite so i'm really excited to add some dimension to this piece um, i'm going to sand the top and i'm going to lighten it i'm going to do like a white stain and maybe a bleached look on the top we're going to brighten this piece we're going to make it more modern and we're going to bring out all those dark details because right now it just is boring and drab and it just needs some vavoom, okay? So what am I gonna do to prep this piece? I am big on prepping. So some people aren't, some people just throw on paint and so be it, but I'm one of those that I like to prep. I wanna make sure all the time that I put into revitalizing a piece of furniture that number one, the paint's gonna stick that I'm not gonna have any adhesion issues down the line. I also don't want any bleed through or wood tannins coming to the surface. If I'm using lingo right now that I'm losing you a little bit, um, bleed through happens when you use light colors like white, gray. I'm gonna be using like a light teal color here, more like seafoam green. Um, and what can happen is if you paint it and you don't prep, and then you put a water-based top coat on, water, um, wood stains can come through to the surface and change the color of your paint and cause you, well, number one, to scream and pull your hair out and be really upset. Um, and you have to start over. You have to repaint the piece of furniture. And if you've invested in some nice paint, um, that can be a waste. So you don't want that happening. And so instead of taking the chance, on, oh, it could happen, it may not happen, but more often than not, it does happen. Um, I'm big on prepping. So what I'm gonna do to prep this piece, since I'm painting in light colors, I need to shellac it. So you can either use two products, it's up to you on what your design is, what your vision is. So on this piece, I'm going to be layering a few different lighter colors underneath, because I'm gonna distress it a little bit and give it a weathered look. So I'm going to use a primer with shellac in it, and it looks like this, okay? It's by Zinsser, and it is white primer, but it has shellac in it. So make sure you get that kind right there that says shellac base. I know they make another primer that does not have shellac in it, and it will not block those wood tannins, wood stains coming through to the surface. Make sure you get the one that's shellac base. I'm gonna get the one, I'm gonna use this one, it's white, um, because I'm gonna distress, like I said, or you can also use just plain old shellac, which is clear. So if I was going to paint this piece, let's just say white, or I don't know, another color, gray, and I just wanted it to be gray, I wasn't gonna distress it at all, I don't want any white primer peeking through, I would probably use just clear shellac. So it all depends on what your final vision is, on what type of shellac you wanna use. There's two types of shellac. There's clear shellac, okay? So if you're only gonna paint with one color, you aren't distressing, you probably want clear shellac. If you're gonna do some distressing, you don't want, mind a little white peeking through, you might wanna do the primer that is white with a shellac base, okay? Hope I'm making sense there. If I'm not, please drop um, your comments below this video and I really try to help people walk through any questions they may have after watching a video of mine, okay? So I'm gonna start um, priming this, I'm gonna sand it, I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse video, I'm not gonna bore you with that part, I wanna get to painting, okay?
large. I don't even know what this piece is. It has to be a sideboard of some sort because the drawers, I'm not kidding you, probably weigh 60 pounds a piece, the large ones. They're ginormous. So I'm gonna call this like a buffet sideboard. It is all done primed. Now I did two coats of the shellac based primer. You can see here it is white and that is now sealing in all those wood tannins, any bleed throughs that I don't want coming to the surface once I put a top coat on this. So let's get to the fun part, the painting. So this is Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint. This is the color Mint Chip. It's one of their popular colors. It's got this really fun, minty, bright, bright, minty green color. And I'm gonna put this coat down first, and then I'm gonna put a second color. This is one of their really popular colors. This is a uh, Apothecary. Look at this color. So it's a little, little richer in color, not as bright, but very beautiful this it's like a sage green a very very popular color so that's going to be my main color so we're first going to get started with the mint green or i should say it's a mint chip that's the uh the actual color name is mint chip okay we're gonna get that on here oh look at this color oh i'm loving this this is a great great color Wow. Boy, I could use this color alone, stand alone. This gives off a very, very, I'm gonna say cottage vibe to me, like a beach cottage. Very vibrant, very fun. Wow, this is a great color. Now, the one thing about the DIY paint that is so awesome the colors, the pigments are really, really bright and saturated, which is great with a clay-based paint. Um, from what I've researched, their paint has five times the amount of pigments that other paints, paint line carriers have, which is great for a couple reasons. You want that pigment to be really vibrant because less coats, you'll get great coverage the darker, brighter the paint is, even your lighter colors. So this is a lighter color, but I can tell it's got a lot of pigment in the paint because I'm getting great coverage. This is one coat. This would be done in two coats. Normally with a light color, you might have to do three, three to five coats with other paints. And I can already tell I'm getting fantastic coverage with this light color that I would only need two coats. So they're not kidding when they say their paint is really pigmented. And it's clay-based, which is different than a chalk paint. Clay-based is even more forgiving than a chalk paint. I find you can blend really well with a clay-based paint. So like if you screw up, you can easily, easily fix it. It's a very, very user-friendly paint. So if you're just beginning with starting to paint furniture and you're afraid of spending money on a nice paint line, like so this, this is a pint, but a quart, a quart is $33, which actually is, I'm gonna say, I don't wanna use the word cheap, but how about this, very affordable. A quart of DIY paint is $33. Other brands run $40 and up. So $33, not too shabby at all. And if you're getting great coverage like this, that means you're gonna be lose, using less paint and getting more projects done. That's a win-win for me. So you can see why I'm very, very excited to share this paint because it's affordable, you're getting great coverage, beautiful colors, I mean, their color selection is phenomenal. This mint chip, this is a great, great color. It's just fun. I get bored of white furniture and I know it has its place. And especially I'm here in New England, I'm in New Hampshire. So people are very, you know, 
they like their whites, neutrals, simple looking furniture, and that's great, but how fun is it to have something like this in your home? I think everybody should have a fun, vibrant statement piece. I don't even care if it's on the blue hue. If it's like something that's like a bright blue color, that's fun as well. Okay, so I'm noticing my brush is getting a little dry. So I tell people when you're painting, always have a mister nearby. I have this, it's a continuous stream mister. See how it does that? You can find these on Amazon. I'll put a, I'll put a link below um, the video description here. Um, they're used by hairdressers. So I just mist my brush and I dip it and I can tell my brush isn't dragging anymore. So occasionally with clay ba uh, based paint like this, it dries super, super fast. That's another awesome, awesome thing because you can get your projects done faster and you can really whip through them. The only con with that is your, your brush might drag, but that's no big deal. You just mist your brush, just like I did there, and away you go. So it does dry extremely fast. Um, I would say by the time I'm done painting this side of the sideboard buffet, I can see it's already drying in here. By the time I finish that side, this side will be dry and I can start putting my second coat on. But remember, I'm not putting a second coat of mint chip on. I'm going to use that other color, Apothecary. And then what my goal here is, once I get that darker green on, I'm going to distress. And then I'm going to have this awesome mint chip color peeking through along with the white primer. And it's going to give this piece some more depth. I really like adding depth to my pieces there's nothing wrong with painting something 100%, but I find it, it appears very flat. And so when you distress, you give that nice dimension of a few colors peeking through and it kind of, it'll give you a weathered look as well. So I'm already done with that. I'm loving mint chip. This is a great color. I want to do a piece of furniture just in that color because that's fun. We're gonna move her this way. We're gonna start on this way. And I'm gonna keep going here. So you can get a lot of coverage with this clay paint. Um, it is non-toxic, which is a big, big plus. It really doesn't have a smell. Well, actually, I used this paint already on a project. I was gonna say, I've lost my uh, smell but I did use it while I still could smell. And you know what, you guys? I'm gonna put up a picture right now while I'm busy painting here. I'll just kind of point this way to the screen. So you'll see in this picture is a before and after. Um, I bought a vintage hutch at an auction not too long ago and everybody loved it. They're like, oh, don't paint it, keep it natural. I love that natural color of it. And I thought, okay, all right. I already kind of knew what was gonna happen, but I played along. People were like, leave it natural, don't paint it. So I didn't. And the hutch sat for over two months. No one bought it. So I decided, okay, I wanna try this new paint out, the DIY paint. So I decided to do something really fun I don't normally go that crazy on a first piece of furniture if I haven't painted with the paint before, but I found this paint to be so user-friendly and it blended so well. I felt very comfortable going that route, my first go round. You'll see on that side right here of that hutch, look at that, I have three colors blending in there. I just went for it, I really had no direction of like, okay, I'm gonna do, I don't know, it almost looks like a, a pinstriped look that I did on that hutch. So that was three colors and it just blended so beautifully and I was really happy with the results and so I named that piece um, my shipped wrecked hutch. It hasn't sold yet, but I have a higher price just because I did put so much time into it and I used a couple transfers. 
So that always determines the price um, of my pieces, you know, the more you put into it. And I bought new knobs for it, but I really liked how the paint blended on that hotch. So this paint, this clay paint, it blends well, very easy to blend. Um, so I would say you would have no issues with that, mixing colors, things of that nature. I know blending paint can be very daunting. Um, if you started out with two colors, blending them, I think most people would really, really fall in love with this paint, just the ease. It is so easy to paint with this. The brushes that I use um, with all my painting, this is a Klingon brush. This is like their shorter brush. Um, it goes by numbers. This is a S30. Um, this is a short handled brush. I love these brushes. This is all I paint with are Klingon brushes. Um, you'll see me when I put my primer on just because it's shellac based. Um, I do use a cheap two inch chip brush, but other than that, I'm using Klingon brushes when it comes to actually painting furniture. All right, this is going on beautifully. I hope this is getting picked up the color on the video. Sometimes I can't tell if the color is getting picked up as well as I think it's getting picked up. So like I said, it's non-toxic, no VOCs, which basically means you guys, nothing that you're smelling, nothing that if it gets on your hands, it does not break through to the blood brain barrier, which is so important. I have so many people when they watch me paint, they're like, oh, you're not wearing a mask. You need to protect yourself. It's like, you don't need to with um, DIY paint. It is so safe. And even Debbie, who is the creator and owner of DIY, DIY paint, feels so confident. She doesn't recommend this, but she said she feels so confident. She's like, you could put it on your face if you wanted to. There is a part of me, I have an intrusive thought, a thought of just like, you know what, maybe I should. Maybe I should just paint my face one time and just show everybody how non-toxic uh, clay paint is. Um, I should read you the ingredients. There are only nine ingredients in this paint, so I'm gonna read them correctly to you. Love is the first ingredient. I love that she puts that. You guys gotta look her up. She's so cute. She's very what's the word I want to like she's just got this bubbly fun personality she wears fun glasses I would say she's she's quirky she beats to her own drum she's creative she's just got a phenomenal vibe to her so anyways her ingredients are love water clay porcelain clay chalk alcohol ester as a binder cellulose pigments and a preservative so only nine ingredients. I wanted to quickly go over the paint sizes that DIY paint comes in. Now I don't have any quarts here. Um, this is a pint here and that's 16 ounces. And they say that paints approximately 70 to 75 square feet. And then here's the sample sizes right here. And here are some of the fabulous colors they have. And I've gotten a lot of samples just because I've started to dabble and play. So that hutch that I just did, you guys, that shipwrecked hutch, I did in these colors right here. So I used, I can't remember these colors. Um, Sandy Blonde was that color. And I think this one is Blue Iris. That's a super, super pretty blue. And then their black, which I believe is called Little Black Dress. And I did mix these two and got a really pretty, um, like a, a navy blue color. And that matched up really well with the transfers on that hutch. So I just wanted to share with you their sizes. And um, I will give probably a more in-depth review at the end of this video how much paint I used on this gigantic sideboard buffet. Okay, here's a different perspective. I'm going to show you a close-up of me applying the mint chip color on one of the drawers. I thought this would be a fun drawer to do a close-up because we got all that fun detail work in those flowers. 
See how pretty this is gonna be once I start layering some colors? So I got the primer white underneath there. We got a little bit of the natural wood still coming through, which is great. It gives us that awesome dimension. It's already looking weathered, and I just love layering colors on top of one another when you get that awesome dimension going. And that's exactly what I want to do on this piece. And then when I get the final layer of paint, which will be the apothecary color, I just think it's just going to pull it all together. So pretty. Mint chip, I can see why this is one of their popular colors. Especially, you know, I was thinking too while I was painting with this, I was like, oh, I could see this like down south. You know, it just reminds me of, you know, very Floridian uh, type of decor. You just have those like pale, brighter colors. Just reminds me of Florida. Very fun. And I'm hardly using any paint. Pretty excited about that. I love when a little goes a long way. That just says to the DIY paint, when they say they put five times the amount of pigments in their paint, they aren't kidding. Because this is really going a long way. Great coverage. And I just have two more drawers to paint. And I've already painted the entire sideboard, the shell of it, and I'm gonna say I probably, I've, I've hardly used any paint. I was gonna give a, an amount there of in the can. I've probably used an eighth of the can so far, and I don't anticipate using much more than that with these last two drawers. So I'm gonna get those last two drawers painted, and then we'll come back and we will do the apothecary. Okay, everything is painted mint chip. The shell of the sideboard buffet is done and so are the, th the three drawers. So now I'm gonna apply my last coat of paint, the Apothecary, which is probably, I'm gonna say probably in their top three most popular colors that I have seen online and everybody doing projects. It's that beautiful, beautiful like I don't know what to call it. It's like sea foam, sage green, probably more of a sage green, I would say. Sea foam gives me more of a lighter color, but this is like a sage green. And yeah, much darker. There, can you see it against the, the mint chip there? Definitely is a darker green, but very pretty, very rich. And I am hoping once I distress this and we get all three colors peeking through, we have the apothecary, we have the mint chip, and we have the white primer underneath. We're gonna have a really, really pretty canvas here, as I like to call it. So I'm gonna continue to paint with this and I will show you the final product once I am done but I am loving this color already oh I wanted to give a few tips sometimes I don't know what to talk about when I'm painting I get like in a groove and I'm like oh yeah the camera's running I should be talking um, a couple tips when I paint um, Definitely get underneath your edges when you paint. I've seen some people, they forget to do that, and then you tip the piece up and you notice that under that edge, nothing has been touched and it just looks unfinished. So my advice to you, when you are painting a piece of furniture, get under, and when I mean get under, do this move, get under, and get that upper lip color on it. Every color that you're painting, your piece of furniture will look more polished and put together. Also, paint the inside right here. 
This inside edge here where your drawers sit, paint that area as well. That's another area that gets overlooked. And you'll find with some of these older pieces of furniture, the drawers sometimes don't sit exactly as they should. And you'll get a little bit of that inside edge showing. And if you don't have it painted with the colors that you're painting, you will find that it just looks, again, one of those details, it just, your piece will not look as polished. So I would definitely make sure you paint under those edges. Oh, and then if you have a curved edge like I do here, I gotta move it again. This is where I get my exercise, people. Um, an edge like this that's curved, I also paint under this. You're gonna see it. It's all these little details that I think that sets a really, really high-end piece of furniture apart from something that I would call like maybe like a, a faster flip and get yourself one of these stools. Oh my gosh. Do you know, I just got this stool when I moved into my house here and I've been painting furniture for so long and I cannot believe all the floors I have sat on over the years instead of having this nice stool that just kind of goes everywhere easily around the room. All right, so there are some of my tips with painting. Details, details matter. Inside of drawers matter. Um, just to give your piece a more polished look. All right, I'm gonna keep painting here. I'm gonna show you the final look before I start distressing and then I'll just stress it a little bit. And then the top here, I gotta re-sand along the edging because I got paint and that's okay. I think I'm gonna bleach the top, get it looking um, a real nice whitewash look, put some liming wax into that wood grain. This is oak, so I got a lot of beautiful grain to play with on the top and I will be back with the next step here and that will be for me to distress this piece. So. I'm gonna say goodbye for now, but I'll be back. Okay, everyone, it is a new day, and I was up super late the other night, starting to distress this piece, and I gotta tell you, yay, I am so excited to reveal this piece to you guys. So, let's recap. So, I put a layer of white primer on that had a shellac base, then I did a layer of the mint chip color of the DIY paint, and then I did two coats of the DIY paint apothecary, and then I distress, I started to, I, I, I couldn't wait. So I left one drawer undistressed. I was looking for the right word there, undistressed. It's behind me right here, and I'm gonna let you guys see me do that um, on a time-lapse video, but I wanted to show you the tools that work really well for me when it comes to distressing. So I love this little gadget here. It's a little sander and you buy these strips and they just Velcro on. And I believe this is 120 grit. This works really great when you wanna get into the corners. If you wanna get along the edging, there's always like these little edges around drawers in this flower area, this real ornate area. I was able to get in there um, at those tight areas and really distress this piece and give it all that gorgeous depth that I'm looking to give it. Uh, I also use a felt block. I love a felt block. If you need to get anything in your arsenal of tools and gadgets, get yourself a felt block. They're very cheap. Um, everything I'm talking about in this video, I'm gonna list below the video description and I'll give you links to Amazon, um, everything that I've used here in this video. So I love my felt block. It's simply just a block and you put uh, sandpaper around the felt block. This is 150 grit. So when I start distressing, I'll either start really, really light sandpaper, 400 grit, to see how well it comes off. And if it's not coming off fast enough, um, and if I'm going through multiple layers of paint like I am on this piece, I'm going to go down to 120 grit on this little guy, and then I do 150 grit ar around a felt block. And I wrap it around like that. Why a felt block? Because if you'll notice, if you put sandpaper around your hand, you're not gonna get even pressure against the piece of furniture because your hands aren't completely flat. flat. So that felt block gives you a nice 
flat, flat surface, gives you something to grab onto, and you can just go across a drawer like nothing, okay? So I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse video. I know this video is getting super long. Stay with me. Um, we're going to distress this. What do we have left to do? I've sanded the top, it looks awesome. I'm going to probably put a white water-based stain, and then I'm gonna put some liming wax on there. I believe I mentioned that earlier because we got an oak uh, finish, or oak wood here, and oak has great wood grain in it, and I really wanna highlight that grain on the top. And I cleaned the hardware, you guys. This hardware is not spray painted, okay? It looks like it is because I use, um, egg carton crates to put my hardware in. Here's another tip for you. That way your hardware can stay level and it fits right into these little doohickey holes. Look at this hardware. This is not gold spray painted. This is brass hardware. Look how clean I got these. I'll put a picture up here. This is what they look like before. Disgusting. I mean, that's got so much gunga and dirt on those handles and look how clean I scrub these. If you wanna know how I scrub my hardware, watch my latest video um, and I go through step-by-step step how I clean brass hardware with intent, uh, I believe it's like 15, 20 minutes, you can get results just like this. So I'm gonna quit yakking, I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse, we're gonna distress this drawer, you're gonna see a difference. Um, I'll do a close-up of what my distressing looks like so far and we'll get going on this piece. Okay, everyone, here is a close-up of the distressing I've already done. Look at this. Isn't this just gorgeous? <gasps> I am in awe of how nice this paint distressed and the weathered look I created with these colors. I mean, look at that right there. Isn't that just yummy? Eee! So here you can see a difference. Here's an undistressed drawer and then here's one with the distressing you got that mint chip peeking through you got the white peeking through and it just gives a beautiful natural weathered look Okay, here's the first side that I just distressed on the time-lapse video. You're going to notice you're going to get a lot of paint dust residue and that's the only, I would say, con to distressing with sandpaper. It does make kind of a chalky mess. Just make sure you have a shop vac nearby and you can suck this up within seconds. And it does take a little while. Doing a, a distressed finish, a weathered look, it is a little time consuming. You are gonna get a little bit of a workout in your arms, but the results are so worth it. Hey y'all, I am all done with distressing. Now I'm getting ready to transform the top and I'm using one of my favorite products. It's a water-based wood stain by Minwax and it's called a whitewash pickling. Love this stuff. So you're gonna watch me on a time-lapse video, apply this with a two inch foam brush and I'm gonna simply put it on and then quickly wipe it away. frosted and beautiful and whitewashed that top looks. I am loving it. All right, you guys, the last part on this piece that I need to do is I need to wax the base of the sideboard buffet. And then once I'm done waxing and buffing it, then I will add that gorgeous shiny brass hardware back on and then we're ready for the final reveal. I wanted to show you guys something. I am in the middle of waxing. I'm three quarters of the way done. I wanna show you the difference in the areas where I've waxed it, where I've waxed, and where I haven't. You'll notice the paint is darker. The finish is darker where I've waxed. This is normal. This, gonna, this is gonna happen with any type of paint that you put a wax over or a water-based top coat. It will darken your paint just a little bit. So don't freak out if that happens. 
Um, I am using their clear wax from the DIY paint line. I absolutely love it. This is the second time I've used the wax. It goes on butterly smooth. Is that a word, butterly? Well, it is now. Um, I apply it with a two inch foam brush, right, or two inch chip brush right here. And I put my wax on a paper plate. I do not dip my brush in my can there. If you'll notice, um, some of the dye from the paint will come off into your brush. Again, I told you guys this DIY paint, this clay-based paint is very pigmented, which is a good thing. But one of the things, look, so you're gonna get it on your brush. That's why you don't want to double dip into the can. Get yourself a, a plate, a scrap piece of cardboard, anything, and scoop it out on a plate and then go from there onto bringing it directly on your piece of furniture. So what I'm noticing with my finish, with my finish, which I absolutely love, look at this. This mint green is coming through, it's just popping. And I'm getting this great, beachy, distressed look. Oh, I'm loving it, what I'm seeing so far. So I wanted to share a little tip, some tips there on how to apply the wax. Once the wax is applied, you let it dry and then you just buff it and it, there's just a beautiful sheen that comes through. So we're gonna get onto that next. I'll show you a show up, um, a close up of what it looks like when it's all buffed. Okay, everyone, that concludes this tutorial with me reviewing Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint. And I can't talk this paint up enough. I mean, look at this piece. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. This paint was easy to use, easy to layer, easy to distress. I love her line of wax as well. This is the second time I've used her clear wax. It's super easy to apply and buff. Run, run, don't walk, run to go get this paint. I'm going to put a link below this video again with all the supplies that I used to revitalize this antique sideboard. And I'm also going to put the links for these paint colors. So I used mint chip and apothecary and then I distressed them. And remember the white underneath is just the primer with shellac. So, and the hardware looks amazing, all cleaned up and beautiful. I am so excited to get this piece listed for sale. Let me tell you, oh my gosh. I mean, I wanna keep it, but I also, I need to feed you, right? Get you your favorite snacks, even though you don't eat too much. You're very spoiled. Like I was saying, if you're new to my channel, this is Biscuit, one of our two chihuahuas that we have. He's the OG, the original, aren't you? He's seven years old and he usually comes on at the end of my YouTube videos and he says a little hello and he does a little sign off with me and then his little brother, who's actually a big chunk, his name's Bacon, Biscuit and Bacon. Bacon's upstairs, probably eating. I mean, he's tipping the scales at 10 pounds. Uh, Biscuit here is only five pounds but we love him dearly. So I am so excited to get this listed for sale. Like I said, I'm gonna put all the links below this video. And if you're ever in the New England area or New Hampshire, we sell this line of paint um, in a store where I sell some of my pieces of furniture. So if you're ever in Hampton Falls, New Hampshire, um, we sell the paint there as well. That would save you on some ch on shipping charges. So I'll put the address right here of the store where we have the paint for sale. And if you can't stop by there, I'll also put the links where you can order it online. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for watching this tutorial if you watched it all the way through. If you have any questions on any of the products or the methods that I use to revitalize this piece, drop your questions in the comment section. I am happy to help you through it to answer any bumps in the road that you may have with revitalizing furniture. So until then, this kid would be saying we say toodaloo. We say toodaloo. See you guys next time. Bye.